India has achieved a significant milestone in its ethanol blended petrol journey, reaching 20%. It's not only a cleaner fuel, but also an economic incentive, agricultural lifeline and a geopolitical strategic decision. But like many achievements, the backstory is a little messy. First, let's clarify what ethanol is. Ethanol is an alcohol in the same chemical family as the alcohol in a beverage. But the ethanol is to fuel, not drink. It's created from a fermentation of agricultural sugars. In India, ethanol is basically derived from two sectors. First, from sugar cane. Sugar mills extract juice from the cane and make sugar. What's left over becomes the molasses that can be fermented to make ethanol. Second, from grains like maize or surplus rice. If the stock is damaged or overstocked, it can be sent off to distilleries. Indian ethanol has ramped up production of both sugar-based and grain-based ethanol plants over the past 10 years. So how did the government put this into motion? By rewriting the rules. They provided financial incentives to create distilleries. They permitted the production of ethanol, not just from sugarcane, but also from surplus grains. They made oil marketing companies buy ethanol at fixed attractive prices. They told state-owned banks to provide easy loans to ethanol projects. They reduced the GST for ethanol for blending from 18% to 5%. They approved ethanol compatible petrol pumps and made car makers produce engines that were ready for E20 fuels. It was a concerted approach and manufacturing all moving in concert. So why blend ethanol with petrol? Because every drop of ethanol we use is a drop of petrol that we don't import. India imports around 85% of its crude oil and spends more than 120 billion US dollars every year. In 2023 alone, the savings was almost 48,000 crore rupees in oil imports for India. This is the money that stays in the Indian economy. And of course, there is the farmer factor ethanol blending guarantees sugarcane and surplus grain a market it helps government to hasten the consumption of access stock in warehouses facilities it turns waste into wealth sounds great right well here's the full picture ethanol contains less energy than petrol about one third less so a 20 percent ethanol blend can reduce mileage slightly modern engines and vehicles can accept it without issue However, older vehicles often require modifications to operate properly. Ethanol is also hygroscopic. It likes to absorb water and water in fuel systems can deliver corrosion, especially with older vehicles or vehicles not designed to use high ethanol blend. Finally, environmental impact is also a consideration. Sugarcane is a thirsty crop and producing ethanol out of sugarcane in states excessive water consumption. Brazil has already been blending ethanol on a national level for decades, sometimes to as high as 85%. The US has blended ethanol for much less time and at a national average of 10 to 15%. India's jump from 5% blending in 2014 to 20% today is incredible. We are exceeded our intended target of 2030 by five years. So what lies ahead? Flex fuel vehicles. Vehicles which can run on any percentage of petrol and ethanol, including 100% ethanol. But this will require greater production, building more stores, keeping a healthy ecological balance between food and fuel. So yes, there is a reason to celebrate 20% and historic blending. It is also a reminder energy transitions come with bumpy roads. For each line of petrol we save through imports, we also use liters of water. And for every advance in independence, we incur small losses of mileage. The question is, can India keep the ethanol engine running without stalling the bigger picture? Please share your views about it. Like, share and subscribe to our channel and stay tuned to one stats for the news that matters.